that's all to say that there are modes of communication that provide us with information that we can't articulate, but that we still act we still act as if that information is valid. And you might say, well, valid for what? What exactly is it doing? What is it representing? What kind of information is it offering? That's so compelling, and what's so interesting about it is the kind of information that we're talking about. That information is so compelling that you'll pay to expose yourself to it. You know, it's a rare lecture that you'll go to and have to pay for the lecture itself. I mean, you'll come to the university and you'll get your degree, but if you had your auction on a Saturday afternoon, or a Saturday night, let's say, it's, it's relatively unlikely that you would attend a lecture, and certainly even more unlikely that you would pay to attend one, but you'll certainly pay to go somewhere to dance to music. And, you know, it's, why that is is not obvious. You know, you say, well, it's, it's, it's entertaining. It's like, yeah, it's entertaining, all right, but it's a lot more than that. I think that dismissing things that are enjoyable as entertainment, which means they're sort of peripheral, they're unimportant in some sense, which is often what... Especially with COVID. It's a real... It's a real terrible habit of psychologists. So, for example, when Steven Pinker wrote his book, it's a book on language, and unfortunately I can't remember the name at the moment. Um, he devoted one chapter at the end, basically, to nonverbal cultural forms, and he talked about them as epiphenomenal. You know, they're just, they're a byproduct. And I think that's deeply wrong. I, I think that our culture actually grew out of dance and drama and music and science came way way later than that and I was watching an old video today um, it was of the animals playing House of the Rising Sun in 1964 it's a pretty good video and it's a great old song I mean they didn't write it it's an old blues song but it's a great old song they do a pretty, pretty good job of it and the audience was full of girls and they were screaming madly away. Now, it wasn't quite as bad as the Beatles, which was completely unbelievable. But it was still, you know, a fairly continual din of delighted shrieks. And, you know, I think that's extremely interesting because you'd never see that at a scientific conference. Well, it's, it's strange, eh? Like, there isn't anything else that elicits that kind of response. Um, Maybe, maybe sports to some minimal degree, but certainly nowhere near the same, nowhere near with the same amount of enthusiasm. And you know, one of the things you, and I mean, that's been happening for a long time. It wasn't merely a phenomenon of the 60s. I mean, I, I suspect it's been happening ever since there's been wandering minstrels, and that's a very, very long time. And I suspect those wandering minstrels left many offspring behind them. <laughs> no, and, well, and what's interesting about that is, you know, I mean, obviously, part of the reason that human beings.